Welcome back to Elder Millennial. I'm Ari Jacob, and today we're tearing down the curtain on the glitzy, sometimes murky world of talent contracts and media deals. From the surprising split between Don Lemon and X. This is cr this is crazy. To Candace Owens waving goodbye to the Daily Wire. I already dumped you. He dumped you big. It was just like a big, huge dumping. The buzz has been basically impossible to ignore. Quick backstory, I was the talent agent behind huge names that now cash in tens of millions of dollars. Who's the most popular girl in the world? <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Making $17.5 million a year. Then a fake journalist named Taylor Lorenz decided to take a swing at me in the New York Times, leading me to sue her for defamation. That How does Taylor Lorenz still have a job? That was just a day in my life. And I'm telling you this so that you understand that while this story may not be about Hollywood itself, it is still extremely cutthroat. I don't steal other people's motherfucking clients. And we're talking about independent media companies and independent talent. And why should you care about all this? Well, with the digital gold rush and everyone trying to be a content creator, it's kind of important that you understand how these contracts work out because maybe one day you're gonna sign one. Do we have a deal? Do we have a deal? Do we have a deal? No. Is it going to be a deal? Is there a deal? By the way, if PBD, Dear Media, or Barstool is watching, I am willing to sit down at the negotiation table with you. Work your ass up and improve in a marketplace. Market rewards people who outwork and outimprove. It's proven. That's neither here nor there, but I will, I will take a swing. I'm ready to go in, coach. Just give me a chance. Thanks to some very public fallouts complete with contract spills from big names who own media companies like Barstool's Dave Portnoy. I have all the tea. I spill the tea, I fucking guzzle the tea, and I go and spit it all over the place because I'm telling the truth. And Daily Wire's Jeremy Boring. You know, sunlight sometimes is, is the best disinfectant. We've got real contracts to dissect. So smash that like button, subscribe, share this episode, and ring that notification bell. You're not going to want to miss this deep dive or any others on the channel. Remember, Elder Millennial is a one-woman show. I film, edit, do all the things. So every like, share, and subscribe keeps the lights on. Okay, so to get to the bottom of why some of these big deals don't work out, you need to understand how they start to begin with. And if you're wondering about Candace Owens' situation, whether she got fired or she quit, hang tight. I've got a guess on that. And I don't think anybody's talked about this. And I'm curious if you're going to agree with me. I think I'm absolutely right. Man, I'm tired of being right. We're going to look at two big stories about deals between media companies and content creators that everyone ended up talking about. One is about a podcast called Call Her Daddy. 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 One of the biggest podcasts in the world. The is f***ing perfection, Greg. With Barstool Sports. And the other is about Steven Crowder and an offer from The Daily Wire that didn't end up happening. No. Uh. <laughs> Let's break this down simply. When creators like YouTubers or podcasters or TV show hosts uh, are making a deal, they want a few important things. Number one, they want to make sure that they're getting heard. They want their shows or their videos to reach as many people as possible. They also want help making their stuff. They need experts like editors, writers, and sound people to help make everything look and sound great. They also want to stay in charge. Because I'm the boss, okay? Creators want to make sure that they can keep making their content their way and they wanna get paid. They want to make sure that they get paid fairly because they're gonna be focusing all their time on creating the content, so they've gotta make sure that somebody else can run the ship and pay their salary. What do the big companies or the platforms, the media companies want? They're looking for shows or videos that people can't stop watching or listening to. They also want some control. These companies usually want to have a say in how the content is made or distributed. And obviously they want to make money. The deal needs to be good for their budget, making sure that they don't spend more than they can make. I can make that much money in five seconds. When media companies want new talent, they have two choices basically. They can pick someone new, someone no one really knows yet. This is the cheaper option and the company has more control in this situation. If this new talent becomes popular, the company makes a lot of money because they didn't spend much to begin with. I have more talent and more intelligence in my little finger than you do in your entire body. And the second choice is to go for someone already famous, someone with lots of fans, and this costs a lot more money. You have to deal with fancy lawyers, the suits. Fucking suit man, and suit man's like, how'd I get a girl like this? Yeah, exactly, suit man. Who doesn't like me? And these people usually make bigger demands. I don't know how to put this, but 
kind of a big deal. People know me. But if this famous person helps make you a lot of money, it's obviously worth it. So media companies have to think hard. Do they want to take a chance on someone new or do they want to spend big on what they might look at as a sure thing? Barstool and Dave Portnoy have taken the risk with a few new people and it's worked out extremely well for them. They discovered Jenna Marbles and Alex Cooper. Alex Cooper went from making $70,000 a year with Barstool to a few years later landing a $60 million deal with Spotify. I was on unemployment checks. I didn't have a job. At the time, I was just vlogging and trying to make it on YouTube. We created four episodes and then Dave Portnoy slid into my DMs. Now, without going too deep into the Call Her Daddy drama, let's just focus on what Barstool's deal with Alex Cooper was and how it all went down. Alex Cooper and her co-host started their podcast, Call Her Daddy, and made just four episodes. Alex was basically the person leading the charge, and she edited it and did, honestly, most of the work. Dave Portnoy from Barstool Sports found Alex, hit her up through a DM, and Barstool brought them on board. At the time, they only had four episodes up, and Barstool helped make their podcast really, really popular because it gave them distribution. The show blew up. In the first two months, it went from 12,000 downloads to 2 million. They went from being unknown to incredibly culturally relevant. At first, Alex and her co-host each got paid seven thousand dollars a year from Barstool, but their deal also included bonuses so they could earn more if a lot more people downloaded the podcast and bought their merchandise. Our original contract was a three-year deal. It included a base salary of seventy thousand dollars and bonuses based on the number of downloads and merch sales. So after one year, Alex and Sophia made around half a million dollars each. Because the podcast was doing so well, Alex and her co-host wanted to talk about getting more money. And the way it all went down was kind of shady. I mean, they were a team. They were both getting ready to stab me right in the fucking face. But ultimately, they asked for $1 million each, plus half the money from merch sales and half the money from ads. They also wanted to own the show Call Her Daddy. Show me the money! The way that media companies work, there's a lot of people to pay. There's salespeople. There's lawyers. And so because... It costs a lot of money to run a media company. Portnoy came back with a new offer. He said Barstool would pay each host $500,000 and give them more money from the merch sales and make their contracts shorter by six months and eventually let them own the Call Her Daddy IP. The story highlights a key point in the world of media. Even a small, unknown podcast can turn into a gold mine. The journey of Call Her Daddy is a testament to this. And after some intense negotiations, Alex Cooper ended up accepting Dave Portnoy's offer and leaving her co-host behind. Barstool was one of the first companies to take that drama and make it the show. Portnoy goes on their feed uh, and uh, drops uh, an episode where uh, he explains uh, everything that's gone on on their feed. That's so brilliant. In my 17 years of doing this, I had never dealt with anybody as unprofessional and disloyal and greedy as those two. I think a lot of people found out about Call Her Daddy through this drama. And she later inked by herself a whopping $60 million deal with Spotify. I believe UTA represented her on that. Honestly, Sophia Franklin got the real bad end of that deal. Alex gets to keep the podcast. What a f the girl got f***ing cut. She's out. Fired. Nothing. Sophia is kind of erased from the history of the show. Alex didn't mention her at all in the episode that announced the Spotify deal. That's a tale with more twists and turns, and we'll have to save the full drama for another time. What's crucial here is understanding the power of partnership between a new talent and an established network. Spotify wants audience, and the reality is, is that the premium for creators right now is extremely high. In Alex's case, her rise to superstardom wasn't a solo act. It really was because of Barstool's platform and the support that catapulted her into the limelight. This kind of setup is where emerging talents trade off immediate big bucks for the network's backing, aiming for that meteoric rise. Take Brett Cooper, for example. Now, her show was actually started by The Daily Wire. The people at The Daily Wire had the idea for it. They ended up actually casting Brett Cooper for the role. So we were scouting talent and I was the producer. I spent like three weeks scouring yeah. the internet for like young, cute girls who could like be the hosts of the mm -hmm. show. And I found you. Okay. And I remember very distinctly slacking Kobe mm -hmm. and saying, BC is my girl. Mm -hmm. Like 
we have to go with her. But Brett Cooper is another rising star who's been making waves on YouTube thanks to The Daily Wire backing her show, The Comment Section. It's a similar blueprint. A relatively unknown talent teams up with a powerhouse network to hit the big leagues. And if you're curious about Brett's journey and her show's backstory, let me know in the comments. We might dive into her in a future episode. But shifting gears, let's now explore The Daily Wire and the Steven Crowder ordeal. It's a whole different ball game, and here's why. Steven Crowder is a conservative commentator known for his bold opinions and large following online, and this caught the eye of the Daily Wire, especially when Crowder became a free agent. Now, according to Venture Nashville, Daily Wire is under a business umbrella called Bent Key Ventures, LLC, co-founded by Caleb Robinson, Jeremy Boring, Ben Shapiro, and Ferris Wilkes. Daily Wire was launched in 2015 with an initial investment of $4.7 million, probably mostly from Ferris. Ferris is a pastor and formal natural gas fracking founder who realized a sizable exit by selling his frack tech to a Singapore-based company, leaving him with, if you believe Forbes, a $2 billion net worth. Now, this part's important because Daily Wire is the same company Candace Owens just left. Now pay attention to the timing because there's all these conspiracy theories. Did she get fired? Did she quit? Is it because no free speech? Okay, just calm down. Look at the timeline, guys. Look at the timeline. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. It's not rocket science. Candace's show teaser originally dropped on Daily Wire's YouTube on March 9th, 2021, which fun fact happens to be my birthday and Tim Pool's birthday. The, the premiere followed on their premium network on March 19th and hit YouTube the next day. Fast forward to Jeremy Boring's tweet from March 22nd, 2024, three years later. Jeremy Boring tweeted on March 22nd, 2024, Daily Wire and Candace Owens have ended their relationship. Candace posted a video saying that she was going to be on Locals, and she also promoted her personal YouTube channel. This timeline suggests Candace's contract simply wrapped up, leading to her departure. Maybe each side of this wants to spin it in their direction to take advantage of the online hype, but looking at the details, it seems like maybe there was just discussions about extending it, but the two sides were already kind of sick of each other anyway, and the timing just made it so that it was best for each to go their own way. This just isn't working out. I, I think you're great, but uh, I, Maybe we should just some, take some time off from each other. And I'll go into what happens next for Candace, in my opinion, but let's go back to the Steven Crowder deal. Daily Wire threw a $50 million offer at Steven Crowder for a four-year run, breaking down to $12.5 million a year. That's pretty much what Don Lemon was allegedly asking for from X as well. I want to go. Here we go again. So while it's a big number, it's not totally unheard of. Stupid juvenile mean game. Now, pitting Don Lemon against Steven Crowder, politics aside, and just based on sheer audience size and overall talent value. Who let the lemon head into the room? You are a waste of life and you should give up. That's like comparing lemons and oranges. And when it comes to Don Lemon's value, let's just say it's sour and the juice is just not worth the squeeze. You are physically repulsive, intellectually retarded, you're morally reprehensible, vulgar, insensitive, selfish, stupid. You have no taste, a lousy sense of humor, and you smell. You know, you're not even interesting enough to make me sick. But that's also a topic for another episode. Discussions with Crowder were initiated given his free agent status after he left the blaze. Hot damn, we gotta find them boys and sign them to a big fat contract. Hell bells, Mr. Lund. If we don't, the goddamn competition will. Focusing on basically what would make Crowder happy in terms of financial partnership with the Daily Wire. Daily Wire made a big offer to Steven Crowder for his show Louder with Crowder, which came with built-in subscriptions, basically, because people were subscribing to Crowder's show. Jeremy from Daily Wire sent Crowder a non-binding term sheet. This is basically the first play in a game. Where deal or no deal. Daily Wire is shooting their shot at Steven Crowder. Picture it as like the initial blueprint and not the final deal. It's them saying, here's the deal we're thinking about. Are you in? Do you want to negotiate it? 
Okay, but it's all talk at this stage. And after dropping a term sheet, you'd expect a bit of ping pong. Lawyers jumping in, hashing out the deal points, and usually there's an NDA to keep things under wraps. But Crowder, he never signed the term sheet, and Boring didn't ask for an upfront NDA before he sent the term sheet. So in an ideal world, you would shake hands, trust each other, and move either move forward with a deal or move on. Shake with your right hand, but hold a rock in your left. But we're living in a time where anyone can take anything you say and make viral content with it. And even with NDAs, just like I had with my talent clients, people can still break these NDAs and suing for that is basically super annoying and no one really does it, but it is meant to keep people on the same page and honest. Anyway, Crowder never signs the term sheet or the NDA and then leaks the deal points to everyone who watches his show. To the others out there who have now been able to verify have been locked into exploitative contracts. That so that leads Jeremy Boring to release what the deal actually was. I hope you're happy too. Do I look happy? And that gives us some really good insight for how Candace's deal might have gone down. The Daily Wire wanted Crowder to create a one and a half hour show four times a week, which adds up to 192 shows a year. He'd also get four weeks off, kind of like vacation time, but he could also record two shows in one day and then he'd have more days off essentially. The deal was for $50 million over four years, and Steven would have to pay for production costs because Jeremy said he probably wanted that kind of control. So out of the 50 million, he'd have to pay for like the costs for the camera people, the editing, the writing, if there's that, all that. They also plan to do big projects with him like they do with their other talents uh, at the Daily Wire. And the Daily Wire was willing to put in extra money into these anywhere between half a million to 2.5 million for each one. Here's how the money part would work. Daily Wire would handle making money from Steven's show and the content and they would own the content made during the deal. But Steven's channels where he puts the content would go back to him after the deal ended. And also Daily Wire would have the ability to start a new channel with Steven Crowder's name and likeness. In Candace's situation, she started a brand new channel with the Daily Wire in March of 2021. So it's likely that they still own that. They will make money from it ongoing, even though she's gone. She's going to now promote her own personal YouTube channel, which I guess is hers uh, now that she's gone from the Daily Wire. With Steven Crowder's deal, Daily Wire also wanted to basically manage Steven's social media, except for his personal Twitter and Instagram. They'd have the right to sell ads on this content, and Steven would need to promote these ads on his show. Steven had to work only for the Daily Wire during this time, but he could still appear on other shows as a guest or whatever. If Steven didn't make enough episodes or if there was issues like losing ad money because let's say YouTube boycotted him, doesn't let him generate ad revenue, then he might get paid less. And this deal was really about making a lot of content together, having a financial setup and really working as a partnership. Boring ultimately claims that Crowder didn't really want to play the game as a team. I'm the only winner on the team. The rest of them are losers, either by choice or by birth. He also claims that in order to run this partnership with Steven Crowder, on top of the $50 million, Daily Wire would have to invest an additional $50 million in legal and marketing, et cetera. So let's just say he overshot it. That basically means he's saying that every show on Daily Wire costs like $10 million a year to produce. Okay, so wrapping up the whole Steven Crowder ordeal, it's basically a classic example of the complex and strategic dynamics that happen in the media world. And it seems like the Crowder situation might just been him signaling his plans to start a new media company. Kids out there coming up, don't sign, don't sign these contracts. Hinting that his company was going to elevate talent like Brett Cooper and sort of show them that there's a different path than going with the Daily Wire and signing a deal with them. There's a world in which contracts and a network exists where everyone benefits with some semblance of fairness, transparency. There's no need to be enslaved like this. If you're out there right now and you're making content work and you'd like to have some backup, some security without losing your shirt, send your email to creators at louderwithcrowder.com and we'll talk. Has he launched that platform and helped other creators? Like he said, that remains a mystery to me. Considering the Taylor Lorenz tactic where she painted my contracts in a bad light and her talent agency, she wrote glowing articles about. If you don't think that that's to redirect talent in one way or another, well, you might still not get how this world works. You haven't been paying attention. You see, after Lorenz targeted me with the hit piece, my clientele was swooped up by UTA, the same agency that reps Taylor Lorenz. That was very sneaky of you. 
it was a low blow for sure, but now I'm on top and she's, well, not. It's horrifying. She actually looks like the devil. On Friday, Nick Fuentes stirred the pot. Even though he's not really supposed to be on X, he was the co-host on a space about Candace Owens, and he was speculating on Candace Owens' Daily Wire exit, attributing it to her political stances. And by the way, I have no idea what Nick Fuentes sounds like because he just isn't someone that I'm very interested in and I don't want to listen to, which is my right as a person. I'm tired of your presence dismissed. Just like I don't want to listen to Mr. Don Lemon. I don't like any of you. <laughs> they just irritate me. That's the beauty of the internet is that we can all choose what we want to watch, just like you're watching me, which I really appreciate, by the way. So yeah, Nick Fuentes blamed it all on political stances, but more likely Candace's contract simply ran its course. It's not about what she tweeted, what she didn't tweet, what she may have liked on eggs. It's about time. You see deals start and they end. It's the ebb and flow of the industry. Sorry, you feel that way, but basically it's the nature of the beast. And yes, everyone loves a juicy story. Like when a Daily Wire host said that maybe Daily Wire is sick of cutting Candace's checks. Jeremy Point has to sign that check. He's doing something that he cannot abide. People say things on this outlet all the time that Ben doesn't like, but Jeremy signs their checks and doesn't stop them. This is too far, not because of Ben, but because of what it really means. It's really this hatred of Jews. These are serious accusations being thrown around. I'm not gonna speculate what was the nail in the coffin. The nail in the coffin was the end of the deal. You always ruin everything. I'm sorry, this is not a love is blind EpiPen moment. You are going to need your EpiPen to open up your airways because you are going to be in disbelief of what you missed out on. It's just business wrapping up and a contract closing its final chapter. Now, I'm going to toss it over to you. Do you buy that Candace quit, that she was fired, or do you believe me because of the way that the timing lines up, that the deal was just over? You're so smart. You're so effing smart. And neither side wanted to extend it or could come to an agreement. And when it comes to Crowder, was he just drumming up publicity, throwing some shade at Daily Wire for the sake of his own game? Because you're greedy, schemy, and selfish. It takes a lot of money and great people to make talent and shows on independent media succeed. But okay, before you leave, I hope you gear up with some elder millennial swag. You can find it at eldermerch.com. And don't skip out on my Amazon selections. You can find it all in my Amazon storefront at littlemissjacob.com. You can snag pieces of my wardrobe, this set, pretty much everything I own. Stay dialed in, keep that brain ticking, and don't miss a beat. We've got more industry secrets to spill in future episodes. I'm Ari Jacob, logging off but never fading out. Remember, between the lines of a contract, that's usually where the real stories are lying, so we will unpack them for you on Elder Millennial. I'll catch you guys later. Bye. Ari, I told you to turn that I off. I did turn it off, but this is the emergency line. This is the bat line, baby. Do you need to get that? I do need to take this, yes. No, he doesn't. I asked for one hour out of a day for his undivided attention. And I can't even have that. You can have it if you want to live in Agora fucking hills and go to group therapy. But if you want a Beverly Hills mansion and you want a country club membership and you want nine weeks a year at a Tuscan villa, then I'm going to need to take a call when it comes in at noon on a motherfucking Wednesday.